Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, we're going to talk about the mother is interfering. So the Lord gave me this word um, like last year. Uh, for whatever reason, I just kept on being distracted, kept on forgetting about the word. Um, and, and the Lord brought it back up to me um, again. And I was like, let me hurry up and record this video. Uh, because clearly the enemy doesn't want this video to come out to come out. He doesn't want, you know, um, you paying attention to family members and how they are interfering, how how the enemy is using and operating through certain family members to, you know, demonically delay the God or name love story. OK, so let me just start off by saying every all mothers are not interfering in the God or name love story. OK, it's the mothers who God is highlighting to you. OK, if God has highlighted to you, whether it's your mother or your God ordained spouse's mother that's interfering in this God ordained love story, then this video, it is for you. OK. Uh, and as I said, Satan is the one operating uh, through these mothers. OK. Um, you know, to, to demonically delay these love story, you know, uh, a lot of these mothers, they have unhealthy attachment to their son and they have a hard time releasing their son. You know, they, they, they make their son out to be their husband, you know, and as a result, you see now, now you see this mother interfering in the God ordained love story. Okay. We're dealing with a lot of toxic mothers who, you know, um, they're just very toxic, you know, narcissism, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so again, all mothers are not interfering. But when God highlights to you that there is a mother in this God ordained love story interfering, you know, this is what I'm speaking to. And then also, let me just say this. Thank you, Lord, for bringing this to my mind. And, and because the Lord, when he first gave me this revelation, he began to highlight a mother figure. Right. But he put emphasis on sometimes it's not always the biological mother. It can be whoever the prodigal is looking up to as a mother figure as well. OK, so again, this video, when we talk about the mother is interfering, it can be your spouse's mother. It could be your mother, but it can also be whoever the spouse is, um, is looking to as a mother figure. OK, maybe this was someone who raised them or maybe they just act like a mother figure to them. OK, so let's talk about this. So we're going to take a look at uh, a few stories in the Bible. Let's start with Sarah. OK, because the Lord promised her and Abraham a promised child, um, Isaac. Right. But because of Sarah impatience to the Lord. Right. She uh, became impatient. She didn't fully trust God. Her faith wasn't all the way there because she was looking more to her age. You know how old, you know, uh, she was at that time and looking at that's impossible. You know, I'm going to be too old. You know, I'm paraphrasing here. And so she got this bright idea, you know, to go ahead and try to have this promised child through her maid servant, Hagar. And so she gave Hagar to her husband, Abraham. They slept together and um, she became pregnant, gave birth to Ishmael. Now, here's what happened. Here's what happened whenever you begin to interfere in God in, in God's God ordained love story. OK, you know, we already know in Deuteronomy 28, it talks about there's cursing for disobedience. The danger of curses are you don't know what curse is about to come in once you are disobedient to the Lord. You don't get to choose the curse. Right. That's the danger. Right. And so we read in Genesis chapter 16, verse five, we can read and see the curse that enter in on Sarah as a result of her disobedience to the Lord. Right. Keep in mind being impatient and now you trying to decide how this prominence is going to come to pass. That's disobedience. Right. And so in Genesis chapter 16, verse five, it says you are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. Right. And then she began to uh, tell uh, Abraham how now Hagar despises her. So Sarah came up under the curse of suffering and now she's being despised. She was once being looked at as, um, you know, someone of respect. Now she's being despised. OK. And so, again, this is a this is a result of Sarah's disobedience, her impatience you know, uh, to the Lord, right? Trying to bring a promise that God promised her to pass in her own, you know, might, right? 
And so we see from this story, the mother interfering, okay? In this case, Sarah interfered because of her own uh, trust and faith in God. She interfered because she was impatient, right? So we see the interference happening right here, but that still didn't stop what God said. Okay, let, let's go ahead and, and, and get God some praise. Sarah interfering and, and giving Hagar to Abraham and they birthing Ishmael, it didn't stop the promise because when you continue to read, Abraham, I mean, yeah, Abraham um, and Sarah, they still gave birth to the promise, Isaac, okay? So nothing is going to stop this uh, God ordained love story. No matter who is interfering, okay, God is going to deal with that that enemy that's interfering, and He's going to remove you know them out of the picture, okay. Uh, and and just know the promise still coming around for a circle. Let's take a look at Rebecca. Rebecca, this is the story of Rebecca, um, and this is in Genesis chapter twenty four. And we're going to read verse 54 and 59. But first, let me give you some um, uh, context behind this. So Abraham getting ready to pass away. And before he passed away, he he asked his servant, he was like, listen, um, I want you to go and find a wife for my son, Isaac. You know, he gave him very specific instructions on how to find his wife. So while his servant is off to go uh, find the wife for Isaac, he began to pray to the Lord and he began to basically ask God for confirmation. He was like, God, I'm, I'm a paraphrase here. He was basically saying, God, confer to me the wife you have for um, Isaac. And so the Lord led him right to Rebecca. And the confirmation that uh, Abraham's servant asked God for, God allowed Rebecca to, to, to show that confirmation to him. Right. And so starting up right here in Genesis 24, verse 54, it says, then he and the man who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother, this is talking about Rebecca brother, but her brother and her mother replied, let the young woman remain with us 10 days or so, then you may go. Verse 56, but he said to them, do not detain me. I want you to underline detain. Matter of fact, type detain in the comment section. He said, do not detain me now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. So he's basically saying now that this has been confirmed, not only, you know, with him, Rebecca, you know, is, is giving him his yes. God already gave him, you know, granted him success and giving him the confirmation. You know, he's like, don't detain me now that the Lord has granted me success. He brought me this far. He he led me to the wife, you know, for Isaac. Don't detain me. This is what he's saying. He said, do not detain me now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. Send me on my way so I may go to my master. Verse 57. Then they said, let's call the young woman and ask her about it. You see how they just stuck on their way of doing things, right? You see how they overlooking the confirmation, overlooking what God is saying yes to. You see that? Let's call the young woman and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his man. So again, we see another um, mother interfering in a God ordained love story, right? Let's continue. Now remember, this was this was about Rebecca. Oh, and let me go back. Let's take a look at that word detain. Because he said, do not detain me, right? To detain means to keep someone from proceeding. It means to hold back. It means to keep someone in official custody, right? So some of these mothers are operating with a pharaoh spirit, right? Pharaoh is the one who refused to let, um, you know, God's people go. And a lot of these mothers are operating with a Jezebel spirit, okay? And so, again, it's not always the prodigal's fault. This is spiritual, 
right? Uh, whenever God highlights to you that that the mother is involved, the mother is interfered, the mother has an unhealthy attachment, it's the mother doing witchcraft, right? You got to begin to see this thing in the spirit because your spouse now is being delayed or hold held up in the spirit, okay? So this is why we always praying. This is why we rebuke it. This is why we command the enemy, release what is rightfully mine, release the spouse, you, you see? So understand, okay, what we're dealing with here. Now, going back to Rebecca, okay, because we just read how her mother um, began to interfere. But look at this. Let's go over to Genesis 27. Um, I'm going to read verse 5. But, but check this out, because we're about to see now even though this story right here that I'm about to uh, speak on, it's not a God ordained love story, but it is, it, it does have something to do with um, the promises of God. Okay. And we see the enemy interfering here. Okay. So this story is about Jacob taking Esau's blessing. Okay. And the same way how Rebecca's mother was interfering, trying to delay her God ordained marriage promise. Right. We now about to see Rebecca taking on this generational curse of demonic interference. Okay. Rebecca in this story is operating from a monitoring spirit. Okay. She's tapping in via divination. I mean, she got that, that spirit of deception on her. Okay. Like you can literally see these spirits in action. So let's start Genesis chapter 27. And we're going to read verse one. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. It said, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son, here I am. He answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then get up. Get your equipment and your quiver and bow and bowl and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. It say, prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now check this out. In verse five, it say, now Rebecca was listening. As Isaac spoke to his son Esau, Rebecca has a monitor spirit in her. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebecca said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat, so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Verse 8, now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. You see how she's about to interfere? She's interfering. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice uh, young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessings before he dies. Verse 11, Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, but my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I will appear to be tricking him and will bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. Verse 13, his mother said to him, my son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Now you see that. You see this. She, this spirit operating through Rebecca is so set on interfering with God's plans to where she's willing to take on the curse. She's willing to come up under a curse. She's willing to live a cursed life because she set on her plans being fulfilled. Okay. So again, we see, and this is witchcraft. Okay. Monitoring spirit that come from the realm of witchcraft. All right. So we see the mother now interfering uh, with witchcraft. Okay. Let's see. And I got another story, but this is coming from the father. Okay. Um, this is the story um, uh, between uh, uh, Jacob and uh, Rachel, okay? And we all know this story. This is found in Genesis 29, um, verse 23 and 25. But, you know, Jacob loved uh, Rachel, okay? Hold on, let me do something real quick. 
Genesis 29, verse 23. Jacob loved Rachel, you know, like soon as he, you know, set his eyes on her, he fell in love with her. And, and so long story short, he agreed to work, you know, um, for Jake, uh, for uh, Laban's um, daughter, Rachel, right? But see, Laban, he tricked Jacob, right? And Jacob was just reaping what he saw because he was a trickster, you know? Uh, so long story short, you know, when you read the whole story, Laban, he didn't keep up his uh, end of the bargain. He tricked Jacob by giving him, uh, by giving Jacob Leah first to marry and then making Jacob work another extra seven years for Rachel. Okay. So again, this is a story, even though it's coming from the father, we still see interference. Okay. We still see how the enemy is interfering, right? Through deception with witchcraft, right? Um, interfering with trying to disdain, you know, this, this spiritual custody, you know, trying to take place. We see the enemy interfering in these love stories, right? So understand what the Lord is saying, you know, when he highlights to you a mother, whether it's your mother, your spouse's mother, or it can be a mother figure that either of you are looking up to. When God highlight this to you, what he is saying is the mother is interfering. So he needs you to rebuke that. He needs you to rebuke all demonic interference coming from the mother or the father or any family members in Jesus' name. He needs you to, you know, um, begin to rebuke um, and bind up all witchcraft, you know, that's being performed over your marriage promise in Jesus' name. He needs you to begin to say out your mouth because death and life are in the power of your tongue, right? So you have authority. You have power in your tongue. So God wants you to use your authority and begin to, you know, say, I take the sword of the spirit and I begin to cut this unhealthy attachment the mother has with her son in Jesus' name, right? You don't want that unhealthy attachment to still stay there because, if the unhealthy attachment is still there, when it's time for um, you and your spouse to come together, they won't. We won't see the the cleaving to his wife taking place. Okay, if that unhealthy attachment is still in place between son and the mother, when God called for reconciliation, and he began to try to join these two spouses together in marriage, the, the husband, because he never detached himself from his mother, you're going to see the opposite of what scripture say. You know, he's not, because scripture say, um, um, you know, basically your father and mother and cleave to your wife. You're going to see the opposite. You will see him leaving the, the, the father and the mother, but he's still going to be cleaving to that mother. He's going to be having that mother being first in the marriage. Okay. So make sure, um, you know, you know how to move in prayer. But God highlight these things to you begin to destroy all unhealthy attachment. These parents have with their children in Jesus name, you know, um, and then begin to ask God, open up their eyes and allow them to see, you know, the unhealthiness, allow them to see the witchcraft, you know, allow like like help them to accept what you were showing them about their own mother. OK, so with that, I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you real soon. Take care.